everyone. It's Miss Elaine from the Firehouse Art Center. I'm coming to you from my home again um, with our art class for today. And today we are doing this. So it is a watercolor dinosaur landscape. And there are going to be two ways to do it. And I'm going to show you both ways. You can either do it with a black paper, turn it into a collage, or you can do it with a black marker. But we're going to be doing watercolor and we're going to be using a fun salt technique to give it a little bit of flair. So I don't know if you guys can see it. I'm going to move it closer to the camera. Do you see those speckles right there? That is from the salt technique that we're going to do. And um, I'm going to show you guys how to do that. So the supplies that we need are, you need paper. And this is just normal paper. If you have watercolor paper, that's totally awesome. Um, it's going to buckle and fold less. But if you just have printer paper, that'll be fine. Just try and use a little bit less water so it doesn't wrinkle so much. As far as the watercolor you can use, you can use pan watercolor. And this is just a kid set that I had uh, just to show you that you guys can use the stuff that you have at home. Um, and I'm also going to show you this stuff, which is one of my favorite art supplies. So this is liquid watercolor. And right now I just have the three primary colors. So red, yellow, and blue. Um, and the reason that this is my favorite uh, art supply for kids is that the color is super concentrated and it's really vibrant. So as far as um, a supply that you can get online or you can actually go to Michael's and get this as well, um, this is one of the things that I think, uh, you know, would be fun to have at home. And there are tons of projects that you can do. Um, so liquid watercolors, this is from Blick, um, but you can get it at Michael's. I believe that uh, Crayola might actually have a liquid watercolor as well. So there are different brands. Um, this one's just my favorite. Uh, you'll need water and a brush. If you are going to do the collage and not just the drawing, you're going to need scissors and glue stick. Um, and I'm actually going to show you a combined uh, collage and drawing technique. So you'll need your black marker and you'll need salt, which you should have, and containers for your paints. So I'm just using my small Tupperwares. Um, kiddos, if you are taking your Tupperware from your kitchen, just make sure you rinse them out when you're done so that uh, you know your family still has Tupperware to put food in. So this is what I'm gonna be using today. Um, and we're gonna be, once again, creating this. So I'm gonna turn the screen down. As far as the title of this, this is Watercolor Sunset with Dino Landscape Collage and a Salt Technique. Um, we don't have an exhibit at the gallery right now, so I kind of have free reign to um, plan the classes and dinosaurs uh, was one of the first ideas that I thought, oh, that'd be so fun for the kids. So that's why this week is Dinosaur Week. Um, and we are going to be doing a very cool uh, glue resist fossil painting um, on Friday. So I'll show you a sample of that at the end of this class, um, but I'm gonna turn the screen down. So just hold tight. And we'll see if that is perfect. Okay, so that is my workspace. I'm gonna move this just to the side. It always gets me confused because um, the camera works opposite. Um, and I'm going to show you the painting. So there is my painting. Um, I am going to take you from start to finish. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I am going to put the paint in my containers. I am going to be using the liquid watercolors. As I said, you can use pan watercolors too. I just want to show you guys how awesome these liquid watercolors are. Um, so maybe you will get some on your own to practice and play with. And I'm not sure if anyone's watching with me now, but one of the best things about these live stream Facebook classes is you can watch it at your convenience. So if anyone's on, 
say hi. Um, if not, and you're watching it afterwards, hello. Um, once again, my name's Elaine, Miss Elaine. I'm from the Firehouse Art Center. We're going to be doing watercolor today. So these are my liquid watercolors. I only have the primary colors, which are yellow, blue, and red. And remember I said that these are my favorite um, supplies because they're super concentrated and the color is really vibrant. So I can just put a little bit in here and I'm going to add a little bit of water to each of the cups because it really is very concentrated and you don't need that much. And you can actually use the water um, that you add to it to really extend the life of the paint. Um, because it is very, very, very concentrated. Okay, so now that I have added water, um, and you might be asking me, Miss Elaine, there's no blue in your sky. And that is true, because I used all my warm colors for the top. So I've got yellows, I've got oranges, and I've got reds. And those are my warm colors. And that's what I used for my sunset. But I'm also going to show you guys how to use your primary colors to mix into a brown. And we're going to do a brown mountain right down here at the bottom. So I'm going to move this to the side. And I'm going to take my piece of paper and put it like that. Um, so this is the pan watercolors. I'm not going to use these, but if you have pan watercolors, the only thing I'm going to tell you is you need to prepare your watercolors first. And that means whenever you're going to use your watercolors, whichever watercolor you use, you just put a drop of water into the pan to prepare them. And that's really all that is. So that means that when you get that paint, it will already already be wet and it'll already be ready to use. Okay, so I'm gonna move my pan watercolors to the side. We're gonna be using liquid watercolors, um, but don't that, let that deter you from using your pans if that's what you have at home. Um, it's gonna be the same exact kind of lesson. Uh, it's just a different, different supply. So I'm doing this upside down, but you guys are gonna be seeing it right side up. This part right here, is where I'm gonna have my mountain and then I'm gonna have my sunset up at the top. So my first step for making my sunset is to paint with just water. I am gonna paint um, from the top of my page to about a third of the way up of my page. Now you might not see where my line is, but it is not painting anything from here down, okay? And I'm just painting with water. Now, the reason I'm just painting with water is I'm just preparing the surface. And when you use this wet on wet technique, your watercolor blends so much better. Now, kiddos, if you look, when I am stroking across the paper, I am going side to side, side to side, the whole page I'm covering. And that just uh, makes the coverage more um, even. So, and it's quicker than just kind of doing this. So you wanna use long strokes side to side and you're gonna cover the page much faster. So you'll see that my paper is curling. Now this is just um, what's gonna happen with your paper if you're not using really thick watercolor paper. That's just the characteristic of the water working with the paper. Um, but I wanted to demonstrate with samples that you might have, supplies that you might have at home. So I'm using a paper that is not typically um, a watercolor paper. So as I said, we're gonna use our warm colors, which is my yellows and my oranges and my reds. Um, but because I don't have orange, I'm gonna be mixing orange on the paper with my yellow and my red. So as you can see, the color is super vibrant. And what I love about painting wet on wet is you're gonna get these things called blooms. And what a bloom is, is when the color spreads. So you can see, I put the color down and cause it's wet on wet, you're gonna see that color spreading. So if I were to use a red, Ta-da! So it's really super beautiful. 
Um, and you can really see how the wet on wet um, really gets that color to spread and bloom. And as I'm mixing my red into my yellow, you'll start to see the orange. And once again, I'm going side to side the whole width of the page, all the way down. Um, and as I get closer to the bottom, I'm gonna use more reds. So it gets darker as I get closer to the bottom. And then when I get to that line that I made where I stopped painting with the water, I'm gonna stop. So this is my sunset. Okay. Now I'm gonna put my brush back in my bowl. I'm gonna swish it. So swish, I'm gonna wipe it on the side to get most of the water out carefully though, so you don't spill your water. And I'm just gonna put my brush to the side because now my sunset is still wet. And I'm gonna take my salt and I'm gonna pour a little bit into my hand just like this. And then I'm gonna sprinkle it onto my page. So the rules about using this salt technique are you cannot remove the salt until your watercolor is dry. Now, you can use different kinds of salt. If you have the larger rock salt, you can see if that's a different, um, if that creates a different kind of result and you can really just experiment. But I'm gonna keep adding this salt and if it clumps, it's totally fine. It'll just create a different kind of look don't brush it off while the watercolor is wet because that will ruin the effect. And I'm just going to sprinkle it. So it's just like seasoning food. You never want to add too much because you can always add a little bit more if it needs more salt, but you cannot take away, especially when the watercolor is still wet. Okay, so feel like that's pretty good. Now, sprinkle it a little bit more. And now that it's sprinkled, um, I'm going to put the salt remaining in my hand into a Tupperware. Don't shake it onto the floor because, um, you know, just try and keep your surface clean. And I'm gonna pick this up and I'm gonna show this to you. Don't pick up your own page. I just wanna get this closer to the camera. So you'll see the salt is absorbing the water and it's creating these little dots where it is pulling the color from the paper. So that is the technique we're gonna try and get. Um, the reason I said don't lift your paper up is because the water may have pooled and then it might drip. So just to be uh, aware of your own paper, just leave it down on the, the table so that it doesn't drip. Okay. Now that we've got the sunset, I said that we were going to mix brown for the bottom. Um, and for this, I just wanted to make uh, a little bit of mountains right here. But we are going to leave this very bottom part dry because that's where we are going to glue our mountain uh, landscape to. So I'm going to dip my brush in the yellow, in the blue and the red, and I'm gonna see what color it makes. And it makes a pretty good brown. So if you are working with your primary colors, and if you wonder, well, I wanna make brown, how can I do that? Brown is a mixture of all the primary colors. And it really depends on what kind of brown you want. So if you want to make more of like an olivey green brown, you would add a little bit more blue and yellow. If you wanted to make a warmer color brown, you'd have more reds in it. But that is how you get brown. It's yellow, blue, and red. And I'm going to make this brown area right here. And if I want to... I can add 
Now see, that one's a little bit too much blue. So it's just a fantastic way to experiment with color mixing. So if you guys have your liquid watercolors and you want to try and do it, you can try and mix some browns and see if you can get this little mountain range in the background, okay? Now I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it to the side to dry. I'm still not going to rub off that salt because I really want a good effect going for that salt. And rubbing it off right now is going to diminish that effect. So I'm going to put it to the side and I am going to get my black paper and my sample. Now this page is actually a little bit smaller. Um, this one right here is a little bit smaller than my black paper as well. So I'm not going to use the whole black piece of paper. It went to about here, so I'm just going to cut that off just so you guys can see. There we go. Now, for this, I'm going to move my watercolor, close up my salt so it doesn't spill. So I am usually one that spills everything, so I try and make sure that I keep my workspace clean um, because I'm a spiller. So, um, I'm going to move this down and you guys can see this right here is my landscape. I've got a palm tree. I've got what looks to be a T-Rex and then um, an Apatosaurus. Um, those are the two dinosaurs that I put on there. And then a volcano and I have the volcano erupting and I added the red watercolor at the end. So I'm just going to imitate that. I'm going to find my pencil and I'm going to draw my landscape. If you have a white pencil, that works. Um, but a normal pencil will work too. You can totally see a normal pencil, but a white pencil might help you guys see. So I'm going to use that instead. Okay, so I've got my volcano. I'm going to start this way and I'm going to do my palm tree. So depending on how good you are at cutting, um, you know, keep that in mind when you're making your design because, you know, some of these small pieces might be hard to cut out. And I'm going to do the Apatosaurus um, right here. Now, I said I was going to do a combination. So just to show you what you can do um, just using a black marker, I'm going to add the uh, T-Rex afterwards. Okay. And I'm going to add the T-Rex with the marker. So there is my Apatosaurus right there. Um, and then I'm going to continue the ground like that. So I'm going to do my T-Rex as a drawing right here. But everything else I'm going to leave as a collage and I'm going to cut it out. So this is a great exercise in cutting paper, um, which is really good for strengthening the hands for writing. So it's really good for dexterity. Um, but, you know, cutting small pieces is difficult. So if you accidentally cut off the head of your dinosaur, don't worry about it. You can just glue it on or you can even just add it on with a marker at the end. So no big deal. Um, if you accidentally cut off your tree also, not a big deal. You can just glue on the tree afterwards. Um, or you can just add it with a marker. Okay, so I'm cutting. Now I'm cutting my palm tree. If you are really good at cutting paper, you can design your palm tree to have little fronds, um, which are like the little um, finger-like leaves on the palm tree. And you can make it super complicated. Uh, that's why this project is really great for little kids and big kids. Um, 
because you can take this as far as you want. So if this is my palm tree, I can cut these little vertical lines for my palm fronds. And I can add a whole other element to my collage. Um, but if you are just getting used to cutting with scissors, you don't have to do that. You can use the bigger shapes. So it really just depends on where you are. Okay. So I know a bunch of kids that could tell me lots of facts about dinosaurs. Um, about whether they're meat eaters or plant eaters, or if they eat both plants and meat and they're omnivores. Um, so there are lots of cool facts about dinosaurs. Um, I know a lot of kids that could tell me what era the dinosaurs they liked were in. Um, and all about the cool fossils that you could find too. So here is my landscape so I can add it with glue. Now I am going to be adding it right now. It's still a little wet. If I was you, I would wait just a little bit to glue um, until it was fully dry. But since we're doing this project, um, I am going to go ahead and glue, but I'm just gonna glue the bottom. I'm not gonna glue the rest of this stuff um, until it dries. I would like you guys to wait and be patient until it's fully dry. And then you can add glue to the back of your um, black paper and then flip it and then add it. I just um, am gonna do this just for speed's sake. And I'm just gonna glue it down to the bottom just like this. And that is my Dinosaur collage. So once it's dry, I'm going to come back and I'm going to glue this down and I'm going to glue this down and I'm going to glue this down at the top. Okay. But it's still a little wet right now and I don't want to do that. Now I said I was going to add the dinosaur, the T-Rex with my marker. Um, I'm going to just do a little tester. It's still a little wet, um, but I just want to see if I'm still able to use my marker. I am. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Uh, so I'm gonna start with, let's see if I'm gonna make him really close because this little frond is kind of messing with my placement for my dinosaur. I guess I could just cut it off. Okay, so as a design decision, I am cutting off my frond and I'm gonna glue it just like that, okay? So that's my design decision. Um, and you guys can do that too. Just based on how you like your landscape, you can always change it. And there are no perfect decisions. Um, it's just however you wanna do it. So I'm gonna do my dinosaur. So I'm gonna start with my T-Rex's head. I'm gonna add his eyeball. Arr. And I'm gonna add his little arms because T-Rexes have tiny little arms and they don't like push-ups. And then I'm gonna add his body and his legs and his tail. And that is my T-Rex. So I'm gonna color him in. So you can either use the black paper or you can use black marker. And once again, I would recommend that you wait until it's fully dry. This is kind of dry, um, but I'm just demonstrating for speed's sake so that you guys can see the end of the project. And currently right now, my paper is just a little bit wet. Okay. So my dinosaur is coming together. So right now I have the T-Rex that I'm coloring in and I have my other dinosaur that I made as a collage. So that is my full sunset with dinosaur collage 
Now, I am going to rub off some of the salt so you guys can see. You'll see that technique. And it kind of looks mottled or textured. It's a really cool technique. And I want you guys to wait until it's fully dry to rub off all your salt. Go ahead and take it outside and rub off all the salt when it's dry. And when you come in, you will have your fully designed landscape with watercolor sunset and salt technique. I'm gonna glue this guy on so I don't lose him. And, ta-da! There you go. So that was kind of a quick lesson. Um, once again, all we used was watercolor. I highly recommend, since we're all gonna be doing art at home, that you guys look into liquid watercolors. And if you're on the website and getting these liquid watercolors anyway, there are liquid metallic watercolors that are my absolute favorite. Um, it is so cool to use those liquid watercolors, the metallic ones on black paper. Um, and maybe we could even do a project um, like that at some other point, but um, that stuff is amazing. If you don't have the liquid watercolors, you can use your pan watercolors. And it is a super cool way to use this salt technique. Um, if you don't wanna use the salt technique in a finished project, uh, you could just do a whole page of different colors and then sprinkle the salt and see what kind of effect that gets. But it's really just a cool technique. If you look right here, you'll see on the brown mountains how the salt is already taking up some of that color. So it's just a really cool technique. Um, and I'm glad that you guys came to class today and shared it with me. If you do this project, definitely post a picture, send me a picture um, on Facebook and I will share it. We love seeing the kids artwork um, and we definitely wanna share what you guys are creating at home. And I'm gonna turn this up so that you guys can see me. Um, and I'm also gonna find the project for tomorrow. I mean, uh, for Friday. So I think it is underneath. That's the top of my head. I think it has gone missing. Anyway, so I will post on the Facebook page the class for uh, Friday, but it's basically a glue resist fossil. So all you need for that class is Elmer's white glue um, in the bottle. So not the glue stick. You want the white glue in the bottle um, and paper and brown tempera paint. So washable paints for kids. And that's all you need, a brush, water, brown temper paint, glue, and paper. Um, and a little bit of patience because you do have to wait until the glue is fully dry to do the painting. Um, but I'm gonna demonstrate how to make the glue fossil and paint on the paper with the glue. And then I will show you with a paper that has the glue dried, how you paint the temper paint on top of it. Um, so thank you so much for coming to class with me again. Uh, my name is Miss Elaine. I'm with the Firehouse Art Center. Um, I'm here at my house in Longmont, Colorado, and just sharing art classes with you. The Firehouse is closed right now, and we miss seeing everyone, from our volunteers to our educators, to people that come to see the beautiful art in our exhibit, um, to the kiddos that come to our art class. So we miss all of you greatly. We cannot wait until we open up again and can see you again and be a part of the community um, in real time and real life. So I just want you to know that your support means so much to us right now. Uh, if you haven't gotten a chance to check out our website, it's firehouseart.org. If you have the ability to support the firehouse at this time, we would really greatly appreciate your support. Um, and I will see you here on Friday at 1 p.m. for another live stream. If you're coming and watching the class after the class is live streamed, hello. Thank you for seeing, um, for coming to our virtual art class. And I will see you next time. Bye.